So if it closes the file, the thing is we are using, okay, our private field, okay, in our class. So by closing the file, I'm closing this one, which means this is also closed. If I try to do anything below with it, I'm going to get an error. So we need to make sure we open it again so that we can continue using it down here. The first thing we did here was just to read how many, like, basically count how many n n numbers are in the file. Because has next will be moved to the last line of the file. Okay? And we close it at the same time. If we close it, before you do anything with the file, you need to make sure it's open. Right? So, in other, in, you know, so I'll just, I'll just keep it this way. I'll keep it this way for now. So, so we encounter the error so I can even explain better. All right. So let's assume that the file is open. We can go ahead and use it. We've, we've created a method that returns how many numbers are in the file, right? So now we can go ahead, okay, and create our array by setting the size, okay, and declaring the size. And we can do that right here. We can say that numbers, okay, that numbers variable we created to hold an, a numbers double array, obviously uh, a double array. It's going to be equal to a new, now we're creating a double array itself, a new double array. Now we need to declare the size. And the size, we know we can make a call to get number of numbers in file. And when we know when we make a call to get number of numbers in file, this method will return how many numbers are in the file. And this becomes our size declarator, All right? our size, basically. We store that here. So numbers, if the file contains 10, this array will be created to store 10 numbers. If I contains two numbers, this array will be created to store two numbers. Okay, so now if we've set the size and now we can go ahead and store the numbers, okay, in, in, in the array, right? Which means we need to go through the, um, the file again. But remember, we close the file here, and we are using the generic, the, basically the file, okay, the file, the, this this private field here in our class. It's the same everywhere. If we close it here, that file is closed. If we try to go through it, okay, it's closed. We need to make sure it's open. Now we can open it here, but I want this method to do it for us because this method basically went through the file, counted how many lines are in the file, and we close it before it returns. In a number of numbers in the file. Let's open it again, All right? Let's open it again, which means we need to we need to basically um, create another scanner, right? We need to create another scanner object. Um, so I'm going to use the same input file just so we we're consistent because that's what we are using down here. So once we close it right here, I'm just going to use input file again. Input file is going to be equal to a new scanner object, right? We're open we're opening it again. We still have our file to read from. We still have that variable, okay? And that still contains our file. Like that, you know, our file is still intact. It still contains our file. We can represent that file. You can use this kind of this new scanner object we're creating here to represent that file. Again, this was just this method was just used to read the number of number the number of numbers, okay, or count the number of numbers in that file. We closed it in order to use the file, in order to go through the uh, um the file and store each number in an array we need to ha make sure it's open after closing it let's open it again um the reason why the reason why is if if we don't if the reason why we close it over here was because that the read position was at the bottom of the page so if we try to do anything with it here it will start from the bottom of the page you have to close it open it again um or, or try to read from the top again right if we if you do this if you basically try, try to create a news kind of you're trying to read from the top Again, that's why we are doing this. Otherwise, if we don't close it, we will try to read from the bottom. By closing it and by creating a new scanner to read from the file, you're, you're reading from the top again, which is good. All right? We can basically open here, but let's let let's let this method handle it for us. It closes it, and then we, we create a new scanner to open the file again. It starts from the top. Or to read from the file again. We create a new scanner to read from the file again. And it starts reading from the top because it's new. All right, so I'm going to pass in our, our file object over here because we still have it intact. I'm going to pass it in here. Now we have the same input file ready because we are affecting our private field here, which is the same we're using now here. So that means this will be open. I mean, what, what I mean is we will have input file, which will basically 
um, you know, it will be, we'll be able to read from the top, okay, because we, it's a new, we created a new scanner object over here. Has next, has the read position has been reset to the top again, which is good. That's exactly what we want. If the read position has been set to the top and we we have an array ready set to how many numbers are in the file, then the next thing is we read from the file, store each number in the array, all right? And we can do that with a while loop. Why? Because again, we have to check to see if the file has next, if the file has a value, right? So I'm going to call input file again. The scanner class has that has next method, right? So I'm going to call input file dot has next. Oh, has next, and it doesn't take any any argument. All right, so input file that has next. If it has a line, right? What we want to do is we want to take that line, basically read that line, and store it in the first position of the array. So I'm because it contains no doubles. I'm going to make a call to next double. We want we want to, oops, sorry, input file the next double. Input file the next double. We want to call the next double method, read that line. And when it reads that line, it's going to return the content of that line, basically that number. Where, where do you want to store it? We want to store it in the first position of the array. The array we know is called numbers. In order to um, access the first position, we, we can do basically zero, right? But we can do it, you know, this is a while loop, and we have to do it dynamically. So let's create a variable that's going to keep track of our, our basically indices, on the index of, you know, of, you know, of the array, the indices. So right here in our constructor, because we are still working in our constructor, I'm going to come up here and declare a variable. It's going to be an int because it's going to keep track of our index or indices. And I'm going to call it, where, um, our, var, our array name is numbers. I'm going to call it current numbers index. All right, current, current numbers index. And current numbers index, I'm going to set initially to zero. So if, if it has a next, if it has a value, I'm going to read that read that line here. Input file the next double. It's going to return the number on that line, okay, to whatever is on the left side here. I'm going to put an equal sign here. Now I have an index, okay. That is going to that that we're going to code to change dynamically. So I'm storing that number in the first slot of that array, which is our current numbers index. It starts off as zero. Once we are done, okay, once we are done, we want to make sure we increase current numbers index by one, right? Because if it has a next value again, we want to store it in the next slot. So we increase the index to so that it stores it in the next, it stores that double value in the next slot of the array, right? And so we need to make sure that current numbers index is equal to what or what's already stored in current, num current numbers index plus one. Right, so we did something like that similar here. Now this, these two lines here can be written, there's a shortcut for it also, all right? So we want to make sure that current numbers index is equal to what's already stored in current numbers index plus one. So by initially it starts off as zero, zero plus one is one, and then one is stored in current numbers index. So the next time we find another value, we read that value stored in the next slot, okay? Because the index has increased, next slot of the array. So this line here can be written in a short form. Current numbers index is equal to current numbers index plus one can be written as current numbers index plus equals one. What this means is we are increasing current numbers index by one. Or you can read it as current numbers index is increasing by one. Same thing, you can use a shortcut version, but you can use a long version. Same thing for this, you can change this also to number of numbers in file plus equals one, same thing. Or you can keep it this long way. All right, so by doing this, we're basically moving all the files, so all the numbers um, from our file into our array. By the time this loop is done, our array will be filled. And when our array is filled, that's all we need. We need to start by doing that, you know, filling our array, and we can now create our methods to do all the other, other stuff. The, to find the lowest number, the highest number, the total number of um, numbers, and the average of numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We have our method that's getting how many numbers are in the file. We have our constructor. Let's go ahead and create the methods below. 
So the first is to get the lowest number. So by, by the time this is done, right, by the time I construct, when I construct a, you know, when someone tries to create an object from this class, our uh, array will be set to the how many numbers are in the file. And, sorry, the, yeah, so our, our, array, our array will be declared to how many uh, numbers are in the file. I mean, the size of it will be declared to how many numbers are in the file. And at the same time, all the numbers are going to be pulled from the file into the array. Okay, so I hope this is clear. All right, so let's go ahead and create our, our accesses. Um, in this case, it's going to be actually mutators. Let's see, lowest number. No, this is going to be accesses. All right, basically, let's create our methods, our, our methods in our class. First one is going to get the lowest number in the array. So I'm going to create, again, an instance method. I'm going to specify the access, which is public. Instance methods don't have the keyword static. So we need to specify the return type. So public, this is getting the lowest number in the array. So if it's getting the lowest number in the array, if the array contains doubles, then the lowest number is going to be a double. So the return type is going to be a double. I'm going to call this get lowest number. Apart from that, it looks just like a regular method. All right, get lowest number, is it going to accept in any argument? No, because we already have an array here, numbers. We can use it. All right, so first, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Assume that the lowest number is the first number of the array. All right, so the lowest, you know, the, the, first, the array contains double, so I'm going to declare a double variable to hold, okay, our, you know, assumed lowest number. That's the first number of the array. We are assuming that's it, okay? So I'm going to call it current, okay, because it can change. So our, I'm going to call this current lowest number. So current lowest number is going to be equal to the first number of the array. In order to access the first number of the array, I'm going to call the name of the array numbers. And then the first number of the array, I can use the index 0 to access it. Okay, we are assuming that's the lowest number. Now, what, what we want to do is, we're going to go through the array, okay? Go through from the first number to the last number. If at any time, right, okay, we've assumed that the very first number is the lowest number, current lowest number. While we go through our way, if at any time there's any number that is less than this number, then that number becomes our lowest number. So we'll replace what is stored in our current lowest number with that number that we've, we've, we've just found to be lower than this. So in order, to, in order to do that, we need a loop to go through our array. It's already been declared, it's, the size has already been declared, and it's filled already. We need to go through it to check, go through it one by one to check to see if there's any number in there that's lower, lower than our current lowest number, which is which is which has been declared as our first number in the array. I'm going to use a for loop for that. A for loop to go through the array. Okay, so I'm going to use a comments to explain this. Uh, let's just do this. All right, so assuming we have an array that contains, let's say, 5.6, 3.4, 2, 0.5, 4, right? Now this array contains four numbers, four doubles, one, two, three, and four. Now when you are counting these numbers, you start from one, you say one, two, three, and four, right? But if it's stored in an array, fine, you can count them that way, but if you wanted to access them, pull these numbers, use them in, in however you wanted, the way you access them is with, 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 their, with their indices, right? or with their index. Now each number has an index. The first number of this array has an index of zero. Not one, has an index of zero. When you're counting, you count one, two, three, four. But when you want to access them and use them, you access them by their indices or by, by their index. The first number has an index of zero. Second number has an index of one. Third has an index of two. The last number has an index of three. So even though there are four numbers, the index of the last, of the fourth number, last one, has an index of, uh, sorry, is three. Okay, and, that, and this brings something that, that's very important with arrays. The index of the last element is one less than the length of the array. Now, the length of this array is basically how many are numbers are in this array. There are four of them. That's the length of it, four numbers. But the index, because it, it starts from zero, even though there are four items, it's zero, one, two, three. Those are the indices. And the last index, so the, basically the index of the last element, elements, is one less than the length of the array. The length of the array is four. The index of the last, ele um, last element is three. So that's very important. So as long as 
uh, you know the in, the index or the indices of these of this array or, of, or basically of any of these elements is less than the length of the array that index is a valid index what it means is we can use that index to access any elements in the array right if I use any index from 0 to 3 okay all of them are less than the length of the array that means all those are, are valid so that's how we check to see if an index is valid and that's how we can use the, these indices to access uh, an element in the array it's very important so what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a variable okay that's going to be used um, that's going to represent the index okay we're going to use to go through or to access these elements so it's going to be int I'm going to call it current okay because it's going to change the index is going to change we're going to change it so I'm going to call it current numbers index okay numbers because that's the name of the array so current numbers index I'm going to set it initial uh, initially to zero because we will use the zero to access the first element and then we'll increase it to one and access the second element all all the way we are checking to see that the index is less than the length of the array if it's a valid index then it's going to be uh, less than the length of the array which is four it's going to be less than four so we set current numbers index to zero okay and we check while the current numbers index okay is less than the length of the array the way we specify the length of the array every array has a public field called length which contains the length of the array and the way you, you access that is with the dot operator so you mention you call the name of the array you mention name of the array numbers dot length it's a field so you don't you know put parentheses just a field numbers dot length will return the length of that array so while the current numbers index okay is less than the length of the array that, that shows that it's a valid index right so we can use that number to access an element in the array so if that's the if while if this, if this is the case if this is true we do what's in the loop basically we use the index to access an element in the array before we come back up okay do anything else okay uh, we add one to current numbers index right we can do current numbers index is equal is equal to what's already stored in current numbers index plus. Well, you can do that. You can do current current number plus plus. Okay, current numbers plus plus. Or this is the same as current numbers index is equal to what's already stored in current numbers index plus one. Or you know you can you, you can do it the other way too, right? So current numbers index plus plus. That's how I'll do it. It's basically adding one to current numbers index. All right. So current numbers index already initially starts from zero. We check to see if zero is less than the length of the array. If it's less than the length of the array, that's a valid index. We can use that to access an element in the array. In this case, it's going to be the first element. And before we, you know, we we go up, okay, come up and check again to see if current numbers index is less than the length of the array, we add one to it. So current numbers in index becomes one. And then we check is one less than the length of the array. Okay, basically, is it a valid index? If it's a valid index, it will be less than the length of the array. If, if it's a valid index, we use that valid index of one to access the next element we use it and we keep going okay if at any time the current numbers index is not less than a length of the array basically if it's equal to or greater than the length of the array that's not a valid index so this loop will end basically by so by doing this we're basically going through the array and and if it reaches the end of the array it will stop right i like to explain this at least once and going forward i just will just use it you know how, whenever we need it so it's good we at least understand it all right so for current numbers index starts from zero while it's less than the length of the array what we want to do is over here what we wanted to do we wanted to get go um go through the array to compare it with our current lowest number to see if there's any number that's less than our current lowest number so while we are going through it if at any time if at any time the num the current number we are on the way to um, access that number is by calling the array name and providing the current index you know we are on basically the current number we are on we start off with zero so we are in the first number so if the first number is less than our current lowest number then that means that this number here that is being accessed or ref, um, pointed to that's been accessed using our current numbers index. that means this number in our array here is our is our current number sorry the, sorry is our current lowest number so in that case we'll replace what's already stored in current lowest number with that number right so we replace what's already stored in current lowest number with that number 
that entire number. We are accessing that number by its index, uh, by its current numbers index. So if we're done with it, before it loops up again, it increases current numbers index by one. So current numbers index becomes one the next time, right? If that number is not less than, this only happens if the number, if the number we are on in the array is less than our current lowest number. If, it's, if, if it, that's not the case, it will just skip and move on. That means the current lowest number will stay the same. But if there's any number at any time while we are looping through the array, if there's any number less than our current lowest number, then that number is our is our new lowest number. So we'll replace what's already stored in current lowest number with that number. Okay. So by the time this is done, current lowest number will contain our our, our real low, our lowest number. So when it's done, what we want to do is in our method here, we want to return our current lowest number. Because and it will be a double, so we're returning a double, and that's it. We're done. All right. So the next thing is to get okay the highest number in the array. It's basically the same thing as this method here, which is um, get lowest number. So I'm going to make a copy of it. I'm just going to change a few things. Actually, let me delete this array here. This was just an example. So make a copy of this, and I'll call this get highest number. So we assume that the first number in the array is our highest number. So I'm going to call it get, sorry, <laughs> current, high, current highest number. Current highest number is our first number in the array. So we go through the, the array, basically our numbers array. It doesn't matter if we are still using current numbers index. The, the variables are, you know, only functional in this, you know, method over here. The variable here is only functional. Um, sorry, th these variables are functional in this in this base, in this method over here. So you can it doesn't matter if they have, to, they have the same name. So we go through the array, our numbers array, and but this time around, if this is our current highest number, while we are going through the loop, if at any time there is a number, okay, that is greater than, okay, that is greater than our current highest number, then that number becomes our our highest number. So we replace what's stored in our current highest number with the number. Okay, it's already there. And when we are done by the, by the time this loop is done, we'll have our current highest number. So let's go ahead and return our current highest number. So we are done with this method as well. So two methods done. All right, so the next thing is to get the total of the numbers in the array. All right, so it's also going to be an instance method, so it's going to be a public method public because we want code outside of this class to be able to, to be able to call this method. So public it doesn't have the keyword static. It's going to return something. We need to specify the return type. So if it's returning the total of the numbers in the array, if there are doubles in the array and it adds them all up, it's most likely going to be a double. It's actually going to be a double. So the return type is going to be a double. So public double <coughs> we're going to call this get total get get total we can call it get total of numbers right because the array is called numbers so let's call it get total of numbers and get total of numbers let's see if it's going to accept any argument no because we have our numbers array to work with so we get total of numbers what we have to do is go through the array and add them all up right so we have our loop that goes through the array. let's make make a copy of that get total of numbers we have our loop Let's delete what's inside of it. Okay, we have a loop that's going to go through the array. So if we're going through the array to add them all up, then we need a variable to keep track of that. Something that's going to be our accumulator. So I'm going to, if I'm adding all up, what's going to be stored in that variable? Okay, it's going to be a double. So we need to declare a double variable. And I'm going to call it total of numbers, right? And I'm going to set it initially to zero. So while we go through the array, we are adding it all up. So total numbers, total of numbers okay, is going to be equal to what's already stored in total of numbers, okay, plus the number we are on currently in the array. So we specify the array name numbers and the current index, the current numbers index we are on. Starts from zero all the way to the last index, right? So we are taking what's already stored in total numbers. Sorry, total of numbers. 
we're taking what's already stored in total, to, so total, total of numbers is equal to total of numbers, what's already stored in total of numbers, okay, plus the current number we are in the array. We are taking what's already stored here, which is zero, if we take the, if, so we're taking what's already stored here, which is zero, plus, let's say, the first number in the array, we add them all up, we store the entire result in total numbers. Then, we take what's already stored, the loop basically iterates again, we take what's already stored in total of numbers, we add the next number in the array to what's already stored in total of numbers, take the whole result and store it in total, total of numbers here. So by the time this loop is done, basically we'll have all the numbers added up in total of numbers. And then once we are done, we can basically return total of numbers. It will have our total. And total of numbers is going to be a double. It's returning a double. So we're done with this as well. Then the next thing is going to be our average. So let's create, that's also going to be an instance method. I'm going to create a public method we need to specify with the return type. If it's returning the average, that's going to be a double, right? Okay, so because once you do the calculation, uh, it's, well, it's going to be a double. So the, the return type is going to be a double, and the name is going to be get average, or let's call it get average of numbers. It's also not going to need any, need us to uh, uh, define any parameters because we have the numbers array to work with. So, for that, the average is basically the total, okay, of all the numbers in the array divided by how many numbers are in the array. Now, we've already declared a method over, or basically created a method over here that calculates the total of our array. Now, in this method here, we can do the same thing. We can write the same code that's going to calculate the total, find the total, and divide by how many numbers are in the array. We can do that. But we don't have to write the code again. We have, because we've created a method that's public to us, we can call that method here just to get our total. So the total we know is going to be a double, so I'm going to create a double variable, variable, and I'm going to call it total of numbers. Now, it doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter that it's the same name here again. This variable is only visible in this method. And this variable is only visible in this method. They don't see each other. Even though they're the same, they don't see each other. They're like, they're like twins, but they're not the same. Okay? The scope of this variable, total of numbers, is within this method. And the scope of this one is within this method. So double total numbers, I'm going to set it equal to, all right, we can go ahead directly and make a call to get total of numbers, the method. It's public to us. We know get total of numbers is going to return, oops, we know that's going to return the total of the numbers array. Actually, we could have called it get. You could, we could have called it get total of numbers array. We could have done that. Get total of numbers array. We could have done that. But when we say get total, total of numbers, we understand, right? So get total of numbers will return the total, and we can store it here. Total of numbers. Now we have the total. Now all we need to do is get how many numbers are stored in the array. Okay, in the array. And remember, every array has a public field called length that contains how many numbers are stored in the array. So that's the number of number of items stored in the array. It's going to be an integer, or an int. And so I'm going to declare an int, okay? And I'm going to call it numbers in, or number of, number of numbers <laughs> in array. We can do that, number of numbers in array. But you can name it anything that makes sense to you. I just like to keep mine long. So in number of numbers in an array is going to be equal to, we can access that length field of an array, okay, the same way we did it up, up, up here. We call the name of the array numbers, using the, and using a dot operator, we can access the length field. By writing this, it basically tell, tells us how many items or how many numbers are stored in the array. So we'll have our total of numbers and we'll have our number of numbers in an array, and these are the two things we need to calculate our average. Our average is going to be a double, so I'm going to declare a double variable. Uh, variable. I'm going to call it average. I'm going to set it equal to, average is the total of our numbers, okay, divided by the number of numbers in the array, semicolon. So the to total of numbers is a double, the number of numbers in an array is an int. When you take a double and divide by an int, you still get a double. So that's why we're storing it here. And now that we have our average, we can go ahead and return it, return average. 
And then we are done with that as well. So we're done with all the methods.